And I'm here today at the headquarters of the ICE in front of the library where the Superheroes exhibition is occurring to talk to you about the Canadian Pacific Railway. It's an amazing feat of civil engineering. In the whole history of railway civil engineering, there's never been anything like it. These are the words of John MacDonald, Prime Minister of Canada, at the completion of the project. On the 1st of July, 1865, Canada was born as a nation with New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Ontario and Quebec coming together to form the Dominion of Canada. In 1871, British Columbia promised to join them as long as there was a railway link from the east to the west. And so the Canadian Pacific Railway project was born. In 1872, the government sent out 500 surveyors under Sanford Fleming to go and survey a route. And they chose a northerly one, cutting across the Canadian Shield, the prairies, and high up in the Rocky Mountains. The government then looked for private enterprise to back the project up. And in 1880, a syndicate of Scottish Canadians created the Canadian Pacific Railway to fulfil the task. This company was incorporated by an Act of Parliament on the 17th of February 1881. The government supported the railway in three ways. Firstly, through 25 million Canadian dollars as a, as a grant. Secondly, by providing 10 million square hectares of prairie land for future property development. And then thirdly, through providing a 20-year tax holiday for the company for all of its exploits. The overall distance of the route was 2,900 kilometres between eastern Canada and Port Moody on the Pacific coast near present-day Vancouver. This crossed three sections of Canada. The Canadian Shield, the prairies from Winnipeg to the Rocky Mountains and then the Rocky Mountains themselves. A project of this magnitude would have involved many, many civil engineers and surveyors working along the line of route trying to understand what structures would be required to be built to make sure that the railway could pass. This would include hundreds of viaducts and bridges, many cuttings and embankments and earthworks where you would need to drive tunnels and then provide stations and all the other infrastructure that would help make the railway a success. To cross the Rockies, the company used the Kicking Horse Pass and the newly found Rogers Pass, named after A.B. Rogers, the first surveyor of the, for the project. This involved gradients that were over twice as steep as the 2.2% gradient allowed. As a result, since then, mainly due to operational issues, the company has bypassed both these passes with tunnels. The tunnels help manage the operational risks of avalanches and help make sure that the railway can be operational year, all year round. By the end of 1881, the company had only built 260 kilometres of railway line. And to help manage this, they brought in Cornelius Van Horn, known as one of the ablest railway generals of his generation. He promised to build 800 kilometres of railway in 1882. And despite the severe flooding of the Red River at the beginning of the year, he managed to provide 700 kilometres of railway and 90 kilometres of sidings, enabling him to claim that he had completed it to his word. The statistics for the route are incredible. Over 10 million cubic metres of earth were moved, 1,700 horses were constantly at work hauling carts, and 5,000 men were working at peak throughout the route. Progress on the route averaged 5 kilometres a day, with an incredible 15.2 kilometres managed in one 15-hour shift at its maximum rate. Through the Rocky Mountains, in one section alone, there were 13 viaducts in one 30-kilometre section alone, one of which was a cantilever steel truss fabricated in the UK and shipped all the way around Cape Horn to be erected over the Fraser River. In the eastern section of the route, across the Canadian Shield, there were some significant challenges posed by the Precambrian rocks. As a result, the company built three factories to manufacture explosives. Each factory produced over a tonne of explosives a day for use on the route to mine through to allow the railway to pass. On the 7th of November 1885, the last spoke was driven at Craig Helaki in the Eagle Pass in the Canadian Rockies. And the railway line was complete. There was a ribbon of steel from the eastern Canada all the way through to the Pacific coast. In response to a call for a speech, Cornelius Van Horn, who was later knighted by Queen Victoria, only could say, all I can say is that the work has been well done in every way. And on the 28th of June, 1886, the first train arrived in Port Moody from Montreal. Canada had been united as a nation and a great feat of civil engineering had been completed. To this day, trains run on the majority of the route, connecting mainly through freight the east and the west of Canada to help make sure that even now there is a legacy of those who worked so hard in the 1870s and 1880s. People today fly from London to Vancouver and what people often say is that by the time you've reached Canada you're not even halfway there. 
What most people don't think about is the amazing feat of railway civil engineering that then runs for the full length of Canada and follows them all the way to Vancouver. It's great civil engineering feats like these that I believe has made the world a better place and it's what inspired me to become a civil engineer. I feel that this was what can inspire future generations to become engineers too.